Hey everyone, it's Fofo Sukiyomi here, and thanks to Alkin, I'm gonna be doing an Isagi video, even though it's been up on YouTube about twice or three times now. But I'm gonna give my little spin to it with the versus matchups. So, first, let's talk about the chemical reactions. First, we have to talk about Isagi and Chigiri. Isagi was the person to bring Chigiri back to his running self and to his glory days. So, I believe Chigiri would throw away the beef they had in the third selection and second selection matchups and also with the fact that Isagi did try to help Chigui when he was hurt during the Blue Lock versus U20 match so that's gonna be the first chemical reaction I want to talk about now Isagi and Nagi they never had problems with each other they were one of the most broken duos in the whole second selection match and even worked well together in the U20 versus blue lock match so yeah it's gonna be a good time seeing them work together again they're gonna be very broken and this is somehow gonna be good for nagi as if he has isagi on the same team it'll keep him motivated throughout the rest of the games instead of breaking after beating isagi now this could lead up to a trio chemical reaction between Nagi, Isagi, and Chigri because Nagi and Chigri must have had more bonding time together with the whole Isagi being chosen by Rin. So Nagi and Chigri would have had two more matches to build chemistry together. And that team is gonna be like really insane. Isagi's good with Chigri, Nagi's good with Chigri, and Chigri should be okay with both of them. And his high speed being able to get the golden zone and even if he doesn't shoot be able to do super fast passes to like Isagi for a direct shot or Nagi to trap the ball and shoot that would be an insane combination to trap the speed of the um the IQ brains of Isagi all three of those formulas are gonna wreak havoc now the one negative chemical reaction I see being is Rayo and Isagi, the two pawns Nagi is used in his journey of blue lock. Rayo will still not forgive Isagi for taking Nagi from him and it will be clearly shown that these two have no chemistry together as they never really teamed up in the whole U20 matchup and like they don't like each other whatsoever. So I don't see Rayo trying to like support Isagi whatsoever. I feel like Rayo would still stay the same and just like ignore Isagi and only focus on himself and later on when Nagi needs his help just focus on Nagi. So that's the dynamic I see being there. Now for this first match it will be Manshine versus Bastard. So Isagi is already returning to his old team and this is the advantage. Isagi will be much stronger and much faster as Chris Prince's training would have insanely increased his strength, his st speed, all his stats immensely, like all his physicals and skills would have been insanely increased, which means it would have been a better matchup for Isagi compared to like his former self. He would already be better from the start. And the fact that he had 20 days break instead of just 10 to get in the starting team, I think Isagi would be able to get in the CEM position. I do not see him taking over Aggie's position as the starting striker. Let me know in the comment section. It really, really wouldn't change much. If you want Isagi to be the starting striker or the right winger to Nagi, you could also go with that. So Isagi could either play CM, CF, or right wing. So let's get into how this matchup would go. It would go fairly similar with Kaiser and Ness trying to get the immediate impact but for this instance it wouldn't work as Isagi and Rayo would have saw it coming and in this stage Bastard would have already had a win against Bart Urcha with Kaiser scoring two goals instead of one since Isagi wouldn't have been there to set up a play so Kaiser is coming in this game red hot with two goals already so this game might just continue normally, but instead Isagi is on the opposite side. The first major change would be Chigui scoring. No one would have any advantage for it. But after that, Kaiser would have a harder time. And I think that's the first major change, which would be Kaiser. Kaiser would really have to struggle because Kaiser did acknowledge 
um, Chigui, he wouldn't have problems stopping Aggie and um, Nagi's combination, and Isagi probably too, because Isagi wouldn't have gotten Metavision. And I need you all to know, Isagi didn't really understand what Kaiser was doing until the play he did to get the Kaiser impact, so that play does need to happen in this version to make the score 1-1. One, one. And then here is where things change. Isagi is going to go off with his meta burst point, but since there's no Kaiser and Isagi mesh up on the same team, Isagi would have a better chance of scoring. So in this instance, I would have Isagi score an insane goal because Nagi would be the perfect distraction. Isagi needs to stop um, Kaiser. And even if Kaiser blocks the shot like the first time, because Kaiser has every right to now since he's on the team. Isagi would definitely need Chigiri's help. I believe with the insane golden 44 formula, with that, Chigiri's gonna be unstoppable. But there might be an instance where Bastard Merchant might all try to stop him all at once, and that's where Isagi will come in. He will completely use Chigiri's golden 44 formula to make him do a sniping assist for Isagi's direct shot. And since Shigiri knows he can't shoot through like four defenders who will try to jump him, he would use his chemical reaction of Isagi to help Isagi score a super goal to make the score 2-1, since Kaiser wouldn't have scored yet. And I do believe Kaiser would score an immediate comeback as Kaiser wouldn't have Isagi in his way stopping his fame. And now let's get into it. Nagi. In this instance, I wasn't going to have Isagi score as Isagi wasn't in that developed stage as he had just gotten Metavision. But then you have to think about he's in Man Strange City, which means his physicals and speed would have been insanely improved, which means he would have been able to better handle the stamina of Metavision to unlock it to its full potential right off the bat. And he would have also had to use his physicals to gain an advantage over the Bastard Munchen defense. That is why Isagi would be able to score in this match. Now for Nagi, I did have Isagi scoring because that would be the reason why Nagi would need to go off for the miracle goal he did in the original one. With Isagi on the same team, the only way Nagi would be able to pop off a miracle goal like that is if Isagi scored like a super goal of his own. So a combination of Chigui and Isagi would make Nagi realize he needs Rayo at a critical moment. And Nagi would score the winning goal to make Manshine City win this one 3-2. So, for Manshine versus PXG in the original's timeline, they got destroyed. Now Manshine's coming in here with a win, so they're looking good. Nagi wouldn't be depressed as much as Isagi would still be there to rival Nagi. So that means that using Isagi as a Fisher hook would still be there for Nagi, even though he technically did beat him, but he wouldn't have fallen down as the way he did. Rayo would have finally talked to Isagi as he would have wanted to know more about Isagi's metavision and how the hell he was performing the way he did. So that would finally spark the first instance for Isagi and Rayo. And Rayo during practice would try to copy Isagi's metavision to further his abilities. Rin, Ruf, um, Sei and Rin having his, both their abilities. So Rayo would definitely get an upgrade as his metavision abilities would be enhanced. And Chigiri would also have more options in this game as Isagi would not be like Nagi and Isagi would be playing at his full best trying to take down Rin. Now for PXG, I don't see much changing for them. I mean the two formulas will confuse and destroy um, Manshine City. So I see this being an insanely close game. But with a full powered Nagi, a full powered Isagi which is stronger than even the current timeline, and a better rail, Chigiri with more options. I can see this team barely, barely, barely beating PXG, and that's because I do believe that the offer is trying to go with Isagi, trying to beat all his former rivals. And I saw this in a Serena Rosa video about why Bastard Mention would be PXG. But I really want PXG to win this because I don't want Rin to lose to Isagi. But I feel like with a full powered Isagi, Nagi, Chigiri, Rail, and that team just being stronger than um, even with Bao because Bao does have his own selfish wishes. 
so with this team i do believe it's really hard because shido is an uncannibalistic beast so isagi would definitely need to stop him just the way he did when it was with say for rin's team i could definitely see rail walking down the midfield they don't really have a counter for tokimitsu but since everyone is really stronger it shouldn't be that bad nana say will get destroyed by everyone on the team and charles i don't know who will stop him i think chigui would have to to be put on him so that way he can react to him and Isagi would definitely have to try and stop Rin's metavision and berserker points now when it comes to Shido's team stopping Karasu is going to be hard but metavision users can easily pinpoint him as Sei did dismantle him so I think Isagi and Rail would be out on top of Karasu Santetsu would be stopped by Chigui and Shido and Charles would be the biggest problem but I think Isagi can manage to find out how Charles is going to react to because if he could react to Sei and Cheeto's combination with Metavision, he'll be able to easily identify it. If Loki pulls up in this game, PXG will win 3-2. But if he doesn't, I think I have Manshine barely winning 3-2 because I just feel like the offer is unfortunately going with Isagi winning. And if Isagi on a team that actually does support him on like Bastard Merchant, he will get the win here. Now in this version, I would definitely have Barrow being way more pissed than he was in the original because he hates Nagi with a living bone. The two of them in episode Nagi have hated each other, calling each other slaves and all sorts of names. He was the first person to make Nagi really care about the Blue Lock Foundation and even made an insane goal, which is probably one of my favorite Nagi goals of all time. And then he has Isagi, and you know him, he's always Isagi hunting. So having both of them on the same team, yeah, Bao's gonna go off viciously. But Manshine is not gonna go down without a fight, as if you can beat PXG or hold them to their very core, you should have a shot against Ubers. Now, Isagi's big brain metavision is gonna go off insanely off the charts. Him and Rail making a metavision combination team would be insane and would definitely be similar to how um, Ubers had to deal with Hiyori. Rail would be Isagi's Hiyori in this game for when they link up because Rail would not always be trying to link up with Isagi as he would be trying to make Nagi the best in the world, not Isagi. So, how do I see this match happening? Isagi would have a better chance of making left shots. This is something I did not mention earlier that I should have. Isagi's would be ambidextrous because when he goes to Chris Prince, his first thing he's going to ask for is to be like Noro Noa. And Chris Prince will try to make him ambidextrous from the start, which means Isagi's left shot would have more power. But would I see Isagi scoring the first goal? No. I think I could see Chigiri scoring the first goal because I think Isagi would be Manshine's ace. So Lorenzo will be on Isagi this time. And the reason being that I think Isagi is going to be the one to pop off against PXG. I think he will score two goals while Chigiri scores one. I don't think Nagi is going to score in that game because Nagi wouldn't be as hyped up as he was. He wouldn't be trash, but he wouldn't have that edge he would have in this match. So I can definitely see Chigui starting off the goal because I don't see anyone stopping the golden 44 formula except for Lorenzo, but he would be locked on um, Isagi to even try to stop it. Unless Lorenzo's speed feats are, in, are really insane. He did stop a Kaiser impact, but he was locked down on Kaiser. So it made sense that he was going to stop the Kaiser impact. Now, let's get into Nagi's input. Nagi definitely has to score in this match because Nagi hates Barrow too. They both hate each other. So with Rayo doing something spectacular, I think Rayo and Nagi will have their Hiyori x Isagi moment in this game, making them score two goals in a row. I do not see Isagi doing much in this game as if Kaiser couldn't get away from Lorenzo, Isagi won't too. So I can see Nagi scoring two goals to win this game. And yeah, I do not see them doing as well. Snuffy would definitely be more vicious in this game as they won't have Raichi to be the protector mode. But at the same time, I think they can hang on long enough 
especially if snuffy comes in that means chris prince will come in which will give them the hype and the boost as chris prince i think will definitely just try to 1v1 snuffy which will also hold him off he will probably be able to actually try and steal the ball although snuffy has his counters for chris prince i could see chris prince filling in the role right she had for them so i can definitely see them barely surviving with the free two with of course barrels going both the goals trying to kill isagi and nagi now this last match is going to be a demolition barcher do not stand a chance against isagi nagi Rayo, and chigiri from chigiri's explosive speed that no one on the team is stopping to isagi and Rayo both using meta vision to destroy the defense and then manipulate them to the railways and nagi's trap shots they're not gonna even score a goal. I can see this being a free note and very fast game similar to PXG versus Barcha right now. Bachira will get stopped by Isagi as Isagi knows how to stop Bachira. Even with his enhanced dribbling, I don't see Bachira being able to do anything against them. We're also gonna have to see Otoya try to sneak by the team, but Rayo is not gonna let Otoya sneak by A for too long and I could see them really struggling. I can see them just doing fast counters. And they will understand when Rail is trying to pass to Otoya as you're not going to sneak past MetaVision users. And Otoya hasn't done anything in the NEL to stop them. Bachelor would st get stopped, but Otoya might be able to sneak in a goal, but that is if he can get past MetaVision users, which he has not shown any good feats against MetaVision users, so nah. Even Karasu took him down, so Isagi should be able to take him down. Now, when it comes to the next thing I want to evaluate, which is how the other teams would be affected. Yes, mom? Let's start off with Manchester City. They would get a potential four wins or, or would get a locked in two wins for sure. They are guaranteed two wins in this scenario, but they could potentially win all, just depending on if they have enough real power to pull through to make an edgy win over Ubers and PXG. For Isagi, this is definitely a plus as he would get better physique, better strength, better speed. And with Chris Prince being hands on, he would be able to be closer to Noah Noah. His meta vision would be able to be enhanced with um, a good physique, unlike his former body, which had to train for the third match to be able to consistently use meta vision through the whole game. So he would be able to use meta vision through the whole game from the beginning as he would face Kaiser and be on the pitch the whole time to understand Kaiser's impact. With the 20 days of training beforehand, it would really impact him well. Nagi wouldn't suffer as much as with Isagi being on the team to motivate him if he ever feels down. Isa Nagi would always be trying, but I don't think he would really try in the PXG game, but he would make a comeback for sure from the Ubers game because of King Barrow. Also, his value won't go down because Isagi would be too much of a star in the PXG match for people to focus on Nagi. One thing about Isagi is he would be Blue Lock's number one as soon as the um, Manchin and PXG match ends as Isagi would have beat Ren, meaning that Ren wouldn't be better than him and wouldn't score a hat trick to get more value than Isagi. Next, we wanna talk I wanna talk about Rail. Rayo would definitely be in a better situation, with his value not dropping from losing to PXG and also having meta vision, he could help Nagi reach further heights because his plays and insane on my Q for the game would increase immensely. And lastly, Chigiri. Chigiri doesn't change much, he would just have Isagi to form a chemical reaction with by using insane speeds to assist him or Nagi for golden formula uh, trap shots or golden formula direct shots between him, Nagi and Isagi. Now for PXG, they would suffer immensely as if they lost to Manshine, that means the people who barely got enough of a value wouldn't get anything. Karasu wouldn't get the 12 mil as he did lose as you get more from winning as well as doing what you do to contribute. Win wouldn't be the number one blue locker and they wouldn't be perfect going into the Bastard Minchin match. So I could see them having a total of three wins at the end of it all. 
For Ubers, they would still get the two wins that I'm predicting them to get, as they would, instead of beating Man China, as I think they will in the, ori the original version, they will beat Bastard München because there will be no one to help Kaiser stop them. They will still lose to PXG, but this time they lose to Man China City. But I don't know if they're gonna beat them in the real version or not, but in this version, they do lose to Man China City. And then also when it comes to the last game, Wait, sorry, um, they already faced FC Barcha and they will destroy them. So I can see them having a 2-2 two two record. Nothing will really change for them. Except Bao would have lost to Nagy in this version. Which would piss him off. For Bastard Munchen, things would drastically change in the team as everyone would have to be obey Kaiser since there isn't a Sagi to fight Kaiser. Which means it would be way too easy for Kaiser and Kaiser wouldn't hold back as he would go all from the front since he isn't going to mess with Isagi. Now the first character I can see getting a benefit is Yukimiya as I think he will be the sub in the game instead of Isagi since Isagi is in there. If we're using logic, Yukimiya was the highest blue locker other than um, Kunigami. So he would get in the first game and get some experience with him having a better chance at a better rating compared to his original self. Now since Yukimiya would have stayed good, in the second game I could see Nepu, the speed defender from the U20 team being the one who actually gets to play at the left back that means he would get finally get a value as right now in blue lock ahead of the pxg game he has no value but i do think they're going to use neo tp to face zentetsu let's mark that off of serena's block i forgot who used that they're using a scramble between two youtubers i forgot which one did the narrow but i i 100 percent back that idea as that is the best way to take advantage of his situation of having zero yen but in this situation he does better one person who does worse is corona as without the isagi link he wouldn't do as well unless he linked up with ness instead which could be a possibility if he doesn't link up with ness he does worse but if he does he does profit as he would be a link up but he would still overall get a less value as ness would be the one assisting all of kaiser's goals and I do believe Kunigami will steal the Kaizo goal against Manchin. I believe that would be his only goal, so his value would go down as I do not believe Kaizo, I mean Kunigami will score in the game against Barcha, as I think Kaizo will score two goals there. Against Manchin, I think Kaizo will score two goals as well. No, sorry. Kaizo will score one, Kunigami will score one. Then in the Ubers match, they will not even score, bro. Unless Kunigami scores. Because Yukimiya cannot 1v1 the whole Uber's defense. There's just too many strong defenders on that team to um, for Yukimiya to score. Kaiser will be locked down by Lorenzo. So unless Kunigami steps up, and I believe Kunigami could, I think it will end in a 3-1 deficit as Kunigami will score a big time shot to score. And then the last game against PXG... I could see it ending 3-2, PXG written against Bastard Minchin if Kunigami scoring one and Kaiser scoring one. So in this instance, I could see Kaiser doing overall way better with no Isagi to challenge him. Kunigami does okay. I don't see him regressing too much because he is a high ENA and he will poach goals in the last three matches, but I do not see him scoring against FC Barcher like he originally did. Yukimiya and Nero do better. Kiora will actually join the Ubers match as Hiyori wouldn't get Isagi's confidence to go in the match. So that means Kiora could possibly do something. And maybe he might score a goal, but I haven't seen his ability, so I'm not even gonna give him a goal in this scenario. But Kiora will get playing time ahead of Hiyori, so Kiora will get his stat. Hiyori would not get any game time onto the PXG match, which would horrendously bring him down. Raichi would still be the same and everyone else on Bastard Munchen, except they wouldn't beat the team of Manchin City, Ubers, and PXG, so they would only have one win in this scenario. And FC Barcha, nothing changes for you guys. You guys are trash. You guys are just gonna have a worse beating from FC Manchin City. That is the only thing that will change. Anyway, thank you for watching. Let me know who you want next in the comment section. 
I do have Yukimiya to FC Barcha being next, but keep on bringing video suggestions. I always read them and I always have them in my bucket list to do. So whatever video idea, what if stratum video you want, just let me know in the comment section and have a happy holidays. Peace.